Good day everyone! Today we are going to be discussing about the soil compaction. Now let us talk about the field compaction. Most of the compaction in the field is done with rollers. The four most common types of rollers are Number 1. The smooth wheeled rollers or smooth drum rollers. Number 2. The pneumatic rubber tired rollers. Number three, the sheep's foot rollers. And number four, the vibratory rollers. Let us talk about the smooth wheel rollers or smooth drum rollers. Smooth wheel rollers are suitable for proof rolling subgrades and for finishing operation of fields with sandy and clayey soils. These rollers provide 100% coverage under the wheels with the ground contact pressure as high as 310 to 380 kN per meter squared. They are not suitable for producing high unit weights of compaction when used on thick layers. Next is the pneumatic rubber tired rollers. Pneumatic rubber tired rollers are better in many respects than the smooth wheel rollers. The former are heavily loaded with several rows of tires. These tires are closely spaced 4 to 6 in a row. The contact pressure under the tires can range from 600 to 700 kN per second. And they produce about 70 to 80% coverage. Pneumatic rollers can be used for sandy and clayey soil compaction. Compaction is achieved by a combination of pressure and kneading action. Next is the ship's foot rollers. Ship's foot rollers are drums with large number of projections. The area of each projection may range from 25 to 85 centimeters square. These rollers are most effective in compacting clayey soils. The contact pressure under the production can range from 1,400 to 7,000 kilonewton per meter squared. During the compaction in the field, the initial passes compact the lower portion of a leaf. Compaction at the top and middle of a leaf is done at a later stage. And the last is the Vibratory rollers. Vibratory rollers are very efficient in compacting granular soils. Vibrators can be attached to smooth wheel pneumatic rubber tired or ship's foot rollers to provide vibratory effects to the soil. The vibration is produced by rotating off center ways. Handheld vibrating plates can be used for Effective compaction of granular soils over a limited area. Vibrating plates are also gang-mounted on machines. These plates can be used in less restricted areas. In addition to soil type and moisture content, other factors may be considered to achieve the desired unit weight of compaction in the field. These factors include thickness of leaf, intensity of pressure applied by the compacting equipment, and the, and the area over which pressure is applied. The pressure applied at the surface decreases with depth, resulting in decrease in the degree of compaction of a soil. During compaction, the dry unit weight of soil is also affected by the number of roller passes. The dry unit weight of a soil at a given moisture content will increase up to a certain point with the number of passes of the roller. 
Beyond this point, it will remain approximately constant. In most cases, about 4 to 6 roller passes yielded the maximum dry unit weight. We yielded the maximum dry unit weight economically attainable. Now let us talk about the specifications for field compaction. In most specifications for earthworks, one stipulation is that the contractor must achieve a compacted field dry unit weight of 90 to 95 percent of the maximum dry unit weight determined in the laboratory by either standard or modified proctor test. This specification is in fact for relative compaction R, which can be expressed in percentage equal to the dry unit weight in the field over the maximum dry unit weight determined in the laboratory either by standard or modified proctor test multiplied to 100. The value of the relative compaction R to pass the specifications for earthwork must be around 90 to 95 percent. In the compaction of granular soils, specifications are sometimes written in terms of the required relative density or D sub R. Relative density should not be confused with the relative compaction. So, recall that the formula for the relative density is equal to the formula you can see on the screen. And also, the relationship for the relative density and the relative compaction is equal to relative compaction R equal to R sub O, which R sub O is equal to Y dry mean over Y dry max, all over 1 minus D sub R multiply to the quantity 1 minus R sub O. So here in the table shows the requirements to achieve the relative compaction R around 95 to 100% based on the standard proctor maximum dry unit weight. So for the ship's foot rollers, you can see the applicability on what type of soil you will use that equipment. The compacted leaf thickness, the passes or coverage, dimension and weight of equipment, and the possible variations in equipments. So depending on your soil and depending on the equipment use, you need to... So depending on the equipment type and applicability, so that you will get the required um, amount of the relative compaction R, which must be around 95 to 100. So for ship's foot rollers, rubber tired rollers, smooth wheeled rollers, vibrating base plate, crawler tractor, power tamper or rammer. Next is the determination of field unit weight after compaction. So, when compaction work is progressing in the field, it is useful to know whether or not the unit weight specifications is achieved. Three standard procedures are used for determining the field unit weight of compaction. Number one, the sand cone method. Number two, the rubber balloon method. And number three, the nuclear method. The sand cone method. According to ASTM D1556, the sand cone device consists of a glass or plastic jar with a metal cone attached to at its top. The jar is filled with very uniform dry Otawa sand. So to get the dry unit weight using the sand cone method in the field, the dry unit weight is equal to the dry weight of the soil excavated from the hole over the volume of the hole. The, soil the hole mentioned is the hole here on the screen. So, to solve for that, let us elaborate the details. First, the weight of the jar 
the cone and the sand filling the jar is determined as the W sub 1. In the field, a small hole is excavated in the area where the soil has been compacted. If the weight of the moist soil excavated from the hole, or W sub 2, is determined and the moisture content of the excavated soil is known, the dry weight of the soil W sub 3 can be found as W sub 3 equal to W sub 2 all over 1 plus the moisture content. After excavation of the hole, the cone with the sand filled jar attached to its inverted and placed over the hole. As you can see on the figure. Sand is allowed to flow out of the jar into the hole and the cone. Once the hole and the cone are filled, the weight of the jar, the cone, and the remaining sand in the jar is determined as the W sub 4. So, W sub 5 is equal to W sub 1 minus the W sub 4, which is the W sub 5, if you analyze it, is the weight of the sand to fill the hole and the cone. So, the volume of the hole excavated can be determined as the difference of W sub 5 minus the weight of the cone all over the dry unit weight of the Ottawa sand. Where W sub C is the weight of the sand to fill the cone only. The values of the W sub C or the weight of the sand to fill the cone and the Ottawa sand or the unit weight of the dry sand are determined from the calibration done in the laboratory. The dry unit weight of compaction made in the field can be determined as the dry unit weight equal to dry weight of the soil excavated from the hole which is W sub 3 all over the volume of the hole. Next is the rubber balloon method. Rubber balloon method or ASTM test designation D2167, the procedure for the rubber balloon method is similar to that for the sand cone method. A test hole is made and the moist weight of the soil removed from the soil from the hole and its moisture content are determined. However, the volume of the hole is determined by introducing into it a rubber balloon filled with water from a calibrated vessel, from which the volume can be read directly. The dry unit weight of the compacted soil can be determined by using the formula dry unit weight excavated from the hole all over the volume of the hole. Next is the nuclear method. Nuclear density meters are often used for determining the compacted dry unit weight of soil. The density meters operate either in drilled holes or from the ground surface. It uses a radioactive isotope source. The isotope gives off gamma rays that radiates back to the meter's de detector. Then soil absorbs more radiation than loose soil. The instrument measures the weight of wet soil per unit volume and the weight of water present in a unit volume. The dry unit weight of compacted soil can be determined by subtracting the weight of water from the moist unit weight of the soil.